Hey, hey, it's Andy Anas, and you're listening to episode two uh, with Star Pizza, Hoop and Holler, Mike Pittman, where he takes us through uh, the world of name, image, and likeness, especially at the University of Houston. It's the following segment, the following series, like I said, that is focused on name, image, and likeness is sponsored by Houston alum Juan Miranda. You can find him on Twitter at Texas Juan. And Mike, last time we were here, we talked about kind of the origins of Hoop and Holler and how that came to be, where the idea came from, the inspirations. Now we're going to focus more on the fun stuff. What was it like actually being able to work with a lot of the athletes? And we'll start from the top, like you mentioned um, in the first episode. If you haven't done so already, please be go back and check last week's segment um, where we talked about the origins. But you said that you reached out to Marcus Sasser and Tremont Mark, who obviously, of course, both play for the men's basketball team at the University of Houston. You were kind of a, you know, maybe not necessarily expecting both of them to get back to you and agree. They did. And long story short, you had them both in the restaurant. What was that process like? Sure. So one thing that we we really uh, underestimated was the the amount of scheduled day that student athletes have, um, mm-hmm. whether in school or out of school. The day is completely booked from morning to night. And and I wasn't aware of all that at first. So when we started trying to set up phone calls or meetings or get together and talk about different stuff, what we could do, what we couldn't do. Um, working with compliance, I realized uh, it took me a couple of weeks to get uh, after those guys had said, sure, we'll, we'd love to work with you. Uh, it took me a couple of weeks to get them actually scheduled. And we kind of picked, we realized we were going to have to pick three or four different times. And just if they showed up, that was our time. So uh, that flexibility was really important to be able to work with them. And I, I learned we all learned that uh, through everybody we work with, uh, uh, even up to now. So having those guys finally figure out that, okay, we're going to do this on a Monday evening. It's going to be at 530. Uh, how do we get them here? Do, do, you have, do you even have your student athlete? Do you even have a car? I don't know. I mean, I didn't think to ask those questions, but then I realized that nobody wants to say, I don't have a car, you know, or, I need, I need, I want you to pick me up or send a car. So we, we have somebody that we'd used for a car service before that I really trusted. So I just sent him to pick up Marcus and Tremont and, and I sort of had a loose idea of what I was wanting to get out of uh, doing a little commercial with them. I didn't want to ask too much because I wouldn't want somebody to, at that point, I wasn't comfortable enough with myself acting or asking them to act and and read a script or anything like that. So we just we just sort of goofed around and did basketball stuff and a couple of little pizza things. And and uh, once we got around to to them being a little more comfortable with us at, at first, it was the the awkwardness of oh, we have to do some legal paperwork and and sign this and read all that. And then I'm kind of realizing as they're signing it, I'm like, hey, I got an autograph. So that was kind of neat. that was kind of neat. I didn't think about that part, but so then I had that, and then we said, okay, well, what do we do now? Well, let's go in the kitchen and do some pizza kind of stuff. So we did that, and you know, try and put basketball together with pizza and get them to goof around with each other, and putting it all together, I knew what I wanted in the end, and I knew I pretty much had the the steps that I wanted, the shots that I wanted, uh, just for a short little thing to show that we were working together, and that was all. I could, that was all I could ask for, and it was all I had asked for. And it was, for the first time of doing that, it was more than I could have expected. So we were really fortunate to get to do that. Those guys are the nicest guys in the world. Perfect gentlemen. Uh, I can't say moldable to do whatever you want them to do, but anything that we asked of them, they did. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, any, they, they probably would have done two hours more if we'd have asked for it. Um, we got to learn what kind of pizzas. I mean, it was important to me as a pizza guy to know what kind of pizza do people like? You know, a lot of people just like pepperoni. Some like, you know, some like honey mustard on everything. Um, and, and that was kind of funny. And we found a way to work that into some other stuff. So working with those guys was really neat. Um, learning how to get accustomed to their schedules was very important. And that was the, to me, the biggest learning step was that, 
NIL deal or not, whether there was money involved in something or not, my schedule didn't matter to them. They have a professional uh, school life and they have a workout schedule. They have a practice schedule. They have a weight room schedule. They have a tutoring schedule. And, you know, some of them have and, and they have a life. And I had to find a place to fit in there. And that was the hard part. But once we learned how to do that, uh, accepting that somebody didn't return my call or my text or or inter internet message, uh, it wasn't I wasn't offended anymore. I realized that I'm just I'm on the back burner over here. They'll get to me when they get to me. Mm -hmm. And being flexible with their schedules was very important. We and that worked out great for working with D.A. Jones, too. Yeah, I mean, that's really interesting. I think that's not something a lot of people, you know, kind of think of just, you know, like you mentioned, how busy and how packed it's got to be to be a student athlete and with their yeah. schedules, especially, you know, once whenever you guys reached out, it was the off season, but they still, have, like you said, they still have to do workouts. They still have to have commitments and then just now amplify that whenever they are in there. Uh, regular seasons i mean it, it's got to be jam-packed so it's certainly an interesting uh, to hear you um, talk about that from your perspective um you mentioned da the anthony jones um so kind of segueing over to the football side of things one when did when did you know you wanted to do something before, with the football i'll team? tell you what before we go to football one of the hardest things i had to do and this was a big challenge for me was don't forget that I, I had to ask Ramon Walker to take a charge in my kitchen. Oh, really? <laughs> I had to ask him because that was like a big deal to me. Was I wanted to, he, he had gotten so much publicity for the way he was able to take a charge on the court. Yeah. Like it was nothing. It was just natural for him to get into position and do that. When we were able to get him into the restaurant and talk for a little while, and I asked him, I said, hey, I'm going to ask you one thing without actually hitting you, can I ask one of my employees to kind of bump you and you take a charge and fall down and we'll make it look like it was harder than it was? And he said, no, that's okay. I'm not going to do that. And we shot <laughs> the rest of the stuff we wanted to shoot. And I said, I'm going to ask you one more time. Now that we've done all this, are you comfortable enough to maybe take a charge in the kitchen? And he said, okay, I'll do it. So, so we went back and we shot that part, and that was a lot of. I was a, it was a big triumph for me because that was something that was integral to what I wanted to show was the he was throwing pizzas in the air and you know making pizzas in the kitchen and and having fun and and picking up a pizza at the counter and all that high five in the staff and and then for him to take a charge from somebody and fall down was a big deal. You know, so I, it, and it worked out pretty funny. And he was a really, really good sport about it. Nicest guy, nicest kid in the world. Yeah, absolutely. You were able to, to win him over over the course of, of the shoot. So that, that, that's awesome. That was part that's of the awesome. learning process was I realized I couldn't ask that first. I had to wait, let everybody get comfortable, and then I could ask for the moon. <laughs> for sure so now like uh, uh transitioning over to da and anthony jones uh, on the football side of things uh, was that a similar process just in terms of reaching out who did you reach out to first because uh you guys have the the sac av commercial uh, mm -hmm. which you yeah. It's funny that you mentioned Ramon Walker trying to draw charges because there are tackles involved in the Sac Avenue uh, commercial too. Uh, but what? How did you guys reach out to them? And 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 what were were those conversations similar to whenever you reached out to the players on a basketball team? Yeah, very different, a completely different approach. The the D. A. Jones thing was the first thing I had uh, football oriented was when we first signed this thing up and got Hoop and Holler Houston going, the first thing I really thought of was if I can't get any of the athletes to do something, I bet I could get Hawk to do something. Mm -hmm. Because our seats are in a spot where I see what he does after every kickoff, and and it's it's always funny to watch, and, and he's a good sport about it, and the coach seems really into it when he does stuff. So uh, I had reached out to him early on, and he'd said, I'd love to work with you. And then after I talked to the compliance department, they said, well, you can do whatever you want with him. He's not an athlete. You can say U of H, you can say you can have the Cougar logo. And then we found out later, well, you can have the Cougar logo, but you have to ask nicely. So mm. they gave us permission to use that. And that was a big step in learning how to, to comply with NIL and comply with licensing and uh, intercollegiate licensing. Um, those were all things we were learning on the fly. And we, we did ask for permission 
before we did anything. Um, so we would do it right. That was a big step for us was learning what was legal and what was not. But the D.A. Jones thing came after I had already done Hawk and all that. Uh, one day, D.A. put out on uh, Twitter, I think, just like a, a thing that just said, hey, where are all the NIL deals at? And mm -hmm. I thought, well, there's no way the guy doesn't have an NIL deal with somebody. And so we just sort of sent the Google Eye thing back and he immediately <laughs> did like Sack Ave plus Star Pizza. And, and I thought, oh, my God, did we just reach out and kind of come to an agreement that that thing might work all live on like on Twitter? On Twitter. <laughs> like I and, and then I thought, well, now what am I going to do again? I'm in a position now where I've kind of set something up, teased something a little bit, and I had no plan. So we started we reached out to him and said, well, hey, would you consider just doing a, a single tweet or a post or something? And and if it gets a lot of traction, if it works out for both of us, to me, that was important. And I had told all of the student athletes, if you ever got in a position where you didn't like the deal you were in, terminate it immediately. We'll end the entire deal. And we haven't run across that, you know, knock on wood. We haven't run across that yet. Um, but DA said, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be involved and, and I'll run it up the flagpole and we'll try and get things going and get as much traction as we can. So when we did that, we just did a single picture of him and said, you know, you'd be eating good on SAC Ave, whatever it said. And mm -hmm. that was just something I had put together real quick, came out the next day and it immediately had like 100, you know, retweets. I had told him, I said, I sure would like it to get to 100 retweets. Then then we can do something else. And of course, it was there in like 24 hours. So that was a big deal to me. I, it showed that uh, football and the SACAV brand was very important to, to the University of Houston fans and to the players. And we decided at that point that we needed to find something fun to do with him. And so I sort of just I told my wife, you know, well, I could let him tack. What can I do where I can let him tack? Maybe he can call and order a pizza and I'll deliver it. And trying to figure out how to put all that together, how we could film it, uh, where we could film it. Um, we had to use an undisclosed location because it was, maybe it was okay to shoot there. Maybe it wasn't. But we got it all <laughs> done. And, and when I asked him, can, do you think you can get some other guys over there? He said, yeah, oh, sure, no problem. How many do you want, 10? Uh, no, 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 I don't need 10 people. We just need <laughs> you. So, you know, he brought some of the guys over, Justin Beatles and uh, Alias Bell and, and – uh, J. Mike was there, J. Michael was there, and getting to meet all those guys and hang out with them and talk and talk about what we wanted to do. I didn't even pitch the commercial to them until we got there. So oh, wow. it was really just don't wear U of H gear. Of course, everybody shows up in U of H gear every time. So <laughs> but their clothing change and all that. Um, but when I pitched it to them, they all laughed and I thought, okay, well, if they thought it was a funny idea, well, then maybe it'll work out. So I figured we'll shoot everything that we can. I had already done the restaurant stuff. So I was at that point, I was just filling in blanks. So I had, everything was scripted I, at this, this now I've done this four or five times. I knew because I get stage fright. I got nervous and, you know, my wife and I are shooting the whole thing ourselves and, and putting it all together ourselves. And, and it probably shows that it's very amateur, but it wasn't supposed to be anything fancy. It's just for fun and to, to, prop up the school. And, and if we found a way to shoot a commercial for the restaurant, Hey, that's a bonus. So mm -hmm. uh, putting it all together with DA was, was a lot of fun. Uh, awesome guys to work with. Those guys would do, if, if I asked them to jump off the roof, they probably would have done it. They probably <laughs> would have asked to land on me, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a couple of things that, that kind of stood out from hearing you talk one um, it certainly seems like a lot of the ideas you, you have to brainstorm. And then once, once you do you know, come up with them and you go to the to players, they're a lot, uh, they're very open to some of the stuff that you throw out there, which is, it, it's pretty awesome, honestly, just to obviously it, it kind of comes across in your commercials because they're, they are really creative. And even like you mentioned and they're all unique. Uh, the SAC Avenue one is different from, the one you guys shot with Hawk, and it's different from what you guys did with uh, the men's basketball team. So that that's kudos to you guys as well. Um, one thing I did want to talk about, which I found interesting, was just in terms of the licensing component um, with the University of Houston. Is that 
what is that? What are those conversations like? Do you have to reach out to the athletics department, the, the university that goes above the athletics department? What, what is that? The University of Houston has an entire department, of course, just for collegiate branding, uh, for the U of H logo, the U of H, the main logo is the interlocking U and H. Mm -hmm. And anywhere that that appears, you have to have permission to use. And there's a time frame when you can use it. And we had always blown up the email of the compliance department over and over and over for all the stuff we've been doing. And, and to the extent that they probably, I mean, I don't know who reaches out to the compliance department, but once I found out there was one, and it was free advice to me because this was all new to me. So reaching out to them was was like having a mentor that could tell me that's OK. This is not OK. You can say this. You can't say that. Um, the whole SAC Ave thing was a, a monster in its own uh, where I assumed I mean, the for the city is licensed by U of H. Uh, the hashtag for that is licensed by U of H. Of course, everybody uses it, and that's fine. You can't use it for commercial branding, which we learned. So mm -hmm. uh, the SAC AF thing, the first thing I'd asked was, is, is that something that the school owns? And they said, no. Nope. And I said, are you sure? I mean, it's everywhere on all the school stuff. And they said, no. Nope. And they left it at that. So when I asked again, there were some, they had already reached out to some attorneys. There were some, it was close to something else that they didn't want to get into a legal battle over. So they just let it go and used it. There was no, you can't use that. There was no, you can use that. But with the Hawks deal, the, the, I had already been told that since he wasn't an athlete, the NIL deals didn't really apply. Um, but when they all showed up and you have, some of them showed up in U of H gear, uh, we kind of paused and reached out to compliance and, and said, can we, do we need to change hats or shirts? Is that okay to use? And they said, well, it doesn't really matter, but that's a licensing thing through U of H. So then we had to go back to them. We went ahead and shot everything. And if we had to redo it, they had said, we'll come back and redo it. Wasn't that big a deal, but I had everything I wanted. We went through a period of working with the uh, uh, collegiate licensing at U of H. It's a whole different department. Um, fortunately, everybody there was very familiar with Star Pizza. And <laughs> maybe that gave us an in a little bit to at least for them to say, well, okay, this time you're good. Next time ask first. But we hadn't shown anything yet. And once we sent them the video, they said, it's harmless. The deal that you have is actually with Hawk. The person wearing U of H gear is not him. So he's an innocent, you know, uh, bystander. Uh, mm -hmm. He's just standing around really in the scene. He doesn't have anything to do with the person you actually have a deal with. So you could use whatever you want. So that was great. Great to know that if we did things that way with those guys, we were able to use the logo. Um, to show some school support, because that's really what it was all about uh, in the first place. And the the licensing thing with the school, those guys were extremely easy to communicate with and uh, very complimentary of some of the work that we did, as amateur as it may have looked. Um, the, the the words from them were, were very kind, and they were very nice to work with. No, man, for sure. Kudos um, just for the creativity standpoint with all the commercials. Um, but I like, I, I, I like corny. The first thing I tell everybody, <laughs> this is going to be corny. So if you don't like it, please tell me up front. Well, corny and pizza sound like a good combination. So you're on the right track there. Yeah. But uh, the last thing I'll, I'll leave you with for, for this segment, just mm -hmm. is there it, – it, Maybe it's the Ramon Walker a story that you already shared, but is there is there another funny story that stands out to you just being able to shoot all the different commercials? Uh, the Ramon Walker one was very special because we shot some of that in the restaurant with a full uh, restaurant full of people. There oh, was wow. a couple of reporters had come out uh, uh, because we knew we were going to be doing that that day. It was scheduled a couple days ahead. So we knew for sure it was going to be, you know, three o'clock Sunday afternoon. Um, I was I had my team around me. I was a little more comfortable that when I had learned I need a shot list. Um, all the things that I wanted to do. And I actually shot two different things all at once with him um, and just sort of mixed it up to try and take as little of his time as we could. And of course, you know, we're doing this while the kitchen is open and we are back there playing around in the kitchen and my guys are looking at me, hey, get out of the way. We're trying to make pizza here. 
you know, and, but everybody was very respectful. And, and when we sat down to do our awkward little paperwork thing and take a couple of pictures, everybody at that point knew who he was. Um, and there were some Cougar fans in there. Thank goodness. Mm. Uh, <laughs> everybody stood up and gave him when we shook hands, everybody stood up and gave him a standing ovation. So, you know, congratulations, young man. And people were coming over and taking pictures. And and that made it feel really special because yeah. uh, we didn't get to do that with Tremont and Marcus. We, we really tried to respect their privacy and their time. And uh, Ramon just happened to be three o'clock on Sunday. There was no there was no way around it. Um, the other guys were you know, 5.30 on Monday night. And uh, when things change, things change. So it, it all worked out great. So that was that was a really neat moment in getting to put all that stuff together. That's awesome. That's going to do it for the second of three series focusing on name, image, and likeness sponsored by at or presented by at Texas Juan on Twitter. Uh, this is a short three segment series focusing on Hoop and Hodler and Star Pizza and kind of their rise to the NIL and what it, it has been like to work with UH athletes. Once again, thank you to Mike Pittman for taking the time out of his day to speak with me. And that's going to do it. Be sure to be on the lookout for the third and final episode focusing on Star Pizza and Hoop and Hodler, which will debut next week as a part of the Pod Slime Jamma podcast. Once again, thank you for tuning in.